Amen. So what is Lent? Is it that stuff we find in our pocket? What? Okay, thank you. It's the 40 days prior to Easter, not including Sundays. So technically, Easter is 47 days long, or Lent is 47 days long. Easter is actually 50 days long. The season of Easter is 50 days long. But Lent is 40 days before Easter and starts on Ash Wednesday. But what... That's the technical definition of what Lent is. But what is Lent to you? What does Lent mean to us? A journey to the cross. Your journey? Okay. Anybody else brave enough to say what it is for them? Preparing for Easter. Say that one more time, because I don't think I caught the first part of that. Trying to understand the journey that Christ took for us, right? Because after his baptism, we'll get that this next Sunday. Our first lesson for for the season of Lent, other than Ash Wednesday on Sundays, is the temptation of Jesus. So after his baptism, he was taken by the Holy Spirit out into the wilderness and tempted after he fasted for 40 days in the wilderness by the devil. And our journey of Lent... Of 40 days, 40 days in the wilderness, 40 days of us journeying is a way that we can connect ourselves with Christ and who He is. But what does this passage tonight have to do with this journey or this understanding of us walking 40 days with Jesus? Beware of practicing your Piety in front of others. What's the word piety mean? I'm really good at pie eating. But that's not what piety is. What is piety? What? Haughty? That's another word. That Who knows what the word haughty means? There's probably yeah four or five of us here, so what is, so what is piety then? Religiousness. Religiousness. That's a that's an easy that's a that's a good way to put that. Yeah, being religious. The Pharisees were pious people. They were they were people who practiced their religion in front of others so that everybody could see them. Right. And Jesus tells us not to do that. How many of you saw people walking around today with black blobs on their forehead? Jesus tells us right here not to do that. Don't let others see how you practice your your religiousness. Don't do that because then what? That's your reward. Your reward is walking around with this black blob on your forehead. Right? Jesus tells us not to do that. That's not what Lent is about. How many of you are giving something up for Lent? You know, Jesus tells us not to tell anybody that. You just said that there. In the... Yes, I did bait and switch you on that. But hey, you all fell into it. So, right? Jesus, because I, I already just said, Jesus said not to do that. And then you just followed right along with me. Right? You're not supposed to let people know. If you're giving something up, you're not supposed to herald it or trumpet, shout a trumpet. It's supposed to be between you and God. 
So what is this all about then? And what if I told you that piety may not be the right word there? Because in the Greek, many words mean many things, right? We'll hear more about that on Sunday. Because there's a little word in our reading for Sunday that means a couple different things. But tonight, our word piety in the Greek also means justice. So what is just? What does justice mean? Fairness. What? Full measure of your sin. One, one understanding of the word justice would be um, punishment for sins, right? Rewards are punishments merited upon what you have done, right? You get what you have, have brought upon yourself. That's one measure of justice. What did you say, Kurt? You said fairness, right? Being just is being fair, impartial, um, giving to people what, they, what everybody deserves, not based upon who they are or who they aren't, right? Another word that this word means is righteous. What does the word righteous mean? Those of you from the 80s? A couple of you got it, yeah. <laughs> right? That's yeah, wicked. Righteous means wicked. Let's talk about that one for a moment. Do not practice, practice your wickedness in front of others. Do not practice your divine moral law or acting in accordance to, which is the same kind of thing as pious, right? Being the person who does what we have to do. But Jesus tells us not to let even your left hand know what your right hand is doing when you give to people. Or when you fast, don't disfigure yourself. Make sure that you wash your face and that you're clean and that you look like you always do. And when you pray, don't stand out on the street corner and pray. I'd be very amazed if I ever saw a Lutheran out on a street corner praying to begin with. But when you pray, don't do that. Go into your closet and pray privately because it's not about us practicing our religion in front of other people. It's not about us showing them who we are. What? Say that again. Say that a little louder. I'm waiting for someone to... to, to... So how then do we evangelize? See, our job is to live as Christ has called us to live. And to do the things that Christ has called us to do. And we do those things and people see them. But we don't do them so that people see them. Did you catch that? We live as Christ called us to be and to do the things that He called us to do. And we live and do those things so that people see them. But we don't do those things so that people see them. We're not supposed to practice our religion so that others can see us doing those things. We're supposed to practice our religion because that's what God has called us to do. We're supposed to pray and we're supposed to fast and we're supposed to give because that's what Jesus did for us. And that's what God asks us to do. He asks you to pray and he asks you to fast and he asks you to give. Now, when he asks you to fast, does that mean he asks you to give up food for a long period of time? This this means yes, this means no. Sometimes that's a yes. It could be. But fasting can also be giving up watching your favorite television show because it gets in the way of family time. Give up your phone. <laughs> Guess I have something to work on. <laughs> it could be giving up something that's getting in the way 
of you being who God has called you to be. And that's why during the season of Lent, we mimic the journey of Jesus going to the cross. Of Jesus being forced into the wilderness by God Himself to, be t- to fast for 40 days and then to be tempted. We follow that same journey. We're walking that together. So if you haven't decided yet to give something up, you know what? You don't have to give something up for Lent. And if you give something up, you don't have to tell anybody else what you're giving up. Of course, no one can hold you accountable then, but yourself and God, because God knows. Or you could take something on. You could do a devotional every day and learn how to walk closer to God. You could give something away out of your closet that you don't use. Give one item away every day for Lent. Purge your house of 40 items. 47 items. You could... In the words of Pope Francis, fast from hurting words and say kind words. Fast from sadness and be filled with gratitude. Fast from anger and be filled with patience. Fast from pessimism and be filled with hope. Fast from worries and trust God. Fast from complaints and contemplate simplicity. Fast from the pressures and be prayerful. Fast from bitterness and fill your hearts with joy. Fast from selfishness and be compassionate towards others. Fast from grudges and be reconciled. Fast from words and be silent so you can listen. But when you do these things, do them with God. Not so that others see you doing it. But if they see you doing it, all the better. Because then they will see Jesus. And that's truly what Lent is about. To draw us closer to the cross. So that we can understand the sacrifices that God made for us. And know that what He's asking us to do in following Him isn't going to be any trouble at all. Because He is walking with us. And He is guiding us through this time. So beware of practicing your piety in front of others. Because God has called you to show them love and mercy. And not the things that we do for God.